Hi, what's up everyone? My name is Vivian from the Paper Letter Blog, also known as the Chatty Pen Pal Channel. And today I have a really, really fun video for you where I will make a pastel colored pen pal flip book. Now, the first two things I'm going to explain, actually make that three. I'm quickly going to say that I might trip over my words and this might not be a perfect voiceover because I'm actually home alone for the first time in weeks. Uh, my boyfriend usually works from home due to the pandemic, but he's actually gone to work today and I it's five o'clock in the afternoon and this is my first time speaking. <laughs> so I'm I am not used to this anymore. Second thing I'm going to explain is yes, my drink looks very, very orange because it's actually a turmeric latte. Um, if you want a recipe, look it up. It's super healthy and it's actually quite nice. The third thing I want to explain is the book I'm using because I know I will get questions about it. It is from Action. Action is basically our Dutch um, or European um, dollar store. So you can get craft supplies and everything else and I actually picked up a book that has paper, vellum quotes, stickers and die cuts and that is the main thing I am using today. So I will also tell you about the measurements I'm using because I know this is going a very fast but I want to encourage you as always to simply use yeah just use what you have don't think that these are strict measurements just craft and do what I usually do, which is craft by look or by eye or just figure it out as you go. You don't have to follow the exact measurements, but just in case you want to know, I will also put them in the description box down below. Now, before you get confused, I always write down these measurements. They're not necessarily for you. They are just for me so that I can remember to put them in the description box. But the first page we cut, so that triangle uh, colored pink page was actually four and a half by five inches. And then the second page we are going to cut is eight one fourth by five inches. So the five inches is how high it is and then eight one fourth is how long it is. And then we're actually going to fold or you already saw me fold the second page on the eight and one fourth inch side. You're going to fold, score or fold it at four and a half inches so that you create that pocket. And then what I did is I um, cut the page off sideways so that I actually created some sort of a triangle shaped pocket. I hope that makes sense. But like I said, I don't want this to be um, rules you have to follow. Just go with your gut. Then the next thing I'm doing is I have that vellum quote that says, do what you love. And my original idea was to make a window pocket so that, you know, you could see the next page through the window, through the do what you love quote. But later on, I realized that if I did that, you would actually on the second page see that do what you love quote backwards and that just didn't make a whole lot of sense so I ended up not making it completely see-through I just made um, I just put something on the back so that you could only see it in the front so I did a whole lot of work for not a whole lot of result but you know you live and you learn if this was for example not a quote card but a heart or something or a shape or something cute then i could have done that but because of the letters it doesn't make sense if you see them backwards as well um so yeah i changed that up and what i ended up doing is i wanted to to make it look a little bit more interactive, I wanted to, to make a frame on the outside as well. So um, that is what I did. I'm going to end up putting a frame on the front so that it looks like it's a, a little painting that you can hang on the wall. <laughs> Um, before I continue with this tutorial, I also want to tell you that I'm going to do a little bit of a story time or not necessarily a story time, but just something I learned the other day. Later on in this video, you know, I still am the chatty pan pal channel. I just, I read something in a book and it had such a huge impact on me and my anxiety and my existential fear. <laughs> I, I just wanted to share that, but I promise you for those of you that are not interested, it won't actually interfere with the tutorial. So you can still watch me craft and make this little flip book while I do my story time. But that's going to be later when I'm decorating. So like I said, I made a little frame. I actually do think it turned out quite cute, although I liked my original idea of the window better. So next time I will use some sort of patterned vellum to do that instead. 
Like I said, the book also has die cuts and stuff like that, so I'm mainly going to use those for decorating. I think that is very fun and very easy. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue my pages together. I have two regular pages and then a pocket and I figured I would just put it together with some washi tape because I have a ton of that and I do not use this often enough. What I did just now is I put some glue on the bottom of that pocket to simply glue it together and then I'm looking in my washi sample stash because I also have too many of those to um, find some thing to glue the pages together. The only problem is when I use washi type to put pages together, I usually also add a thin layer of glue or adhesive because nine out of 10 times washi is not strong enough to hold everything in place. I also want to say, you may have heard me mention this, I forgot, did I mention this already? Maybe not, um, that I'm going back to my old way of making videos. Nothing changes for you, but before I got a little bit messy and behind I used to make a video for someone's mail wait for them to receive it and then upload the video and lately I've just been crafting a whole lot of projects without receiver and without sending it out and a lot of the projects that I've created in videos a while back have, are still in my craft room some of them are because I still have to write the letter because I know who it's going to but often it's also because they don't have a receiver yet and while that is fun because sometimes you just find the perfect person for a project you've already crafted i kind of miss crafting specifically for people although i still do that sometimes as well so i actually started doing this thing again where i craft first wait for it to be received and then upload the video the only problem is i am not sure if this one was received i waited patiently but it's going to canada and i don't know if or i think it's going to canada or usa i forgot i think it's going to canada but i sent this out to ethany so ethany if you are watching this click away now i know i've already spoiled a whole lot but it should be with her soon or it has already arrived i don't know i just i was impatient and i wanted to start this video and i thought it would be okay and uh, maybe it's not so but from now on i will try to have it be have it have have people receive it first and then continue the exception to this is the challenge video so when i'm doing a challenge over on my patreon or when i'm doing a brand collab because some brands are very impatient and they're emailing me like hello when is this video coming up but i don't do brand reps too often so that should be okay I make another mistake here because I thought that if I put an eyelid through a button I could use that as a cute closure and then I realized it doesn't actually work. So what I end up doing is I end up putting foam, I make it very difficult, I end up putting foam tape behind it and then putting the ribbon through it and I can't really do a tutorial on this because it's not perfect and it, I don't know why I thought this would work <laughs> but um, I thought I could use a button and a brad and it doesn't um, it's messy but in the end it does look kind of cute so uh this was back i filmed this back when i had my um crocodile when i just purchased my crocodile and i was so excited i was trying to use it for every single project i was doing <laughs> so that's my excuse anywho now that we have a second because all i'm going to be doing now is make some goodies um, which I will explain as we go and decorate the rest of the book, which I will also explain as we go. I'm going to start my story time. Okay, some of you are new and you may not know that this is a thing I used to do very, very often. I uploaded a flow paper lovers book kind of... What is it called again? Nature Lovers Book Paper something uh, last week and I always get some new followers after that which is very exciting. This is my boyfriend bringing me dessert. Very exciting. First of all, hello new followers. <laughs> Feel free to leave a little message in the comments down below. I always love meeting you. Um, and it's also, it is exciting because I I work hard on my videos and I like new followers but it's even more exciting because that sometimes means that more crafty people are finding pen piling and that's just very exciting sometimes i get a random message from someone saying hey randomly found your videos on youtube and i didn't know pen piling was a thing and now i'm addicted and that's like the whole reason why i love making videos anywho um distracted yes <laughs> i 
Um, yeah, so what I'm doing here is I have that button. It's a button die cut, so that's why I keep calling it a button. I have that circle die cut uh, with an eyelet through it and then foam tape behind it and then I put the yarn through the hole as well and then I close it on the other end with a little flower shaped brand. So it's just to hold the flip book together. It's not perfect, but I was so keen on using that eyelet that I had punched that I just made it work. <laughs> so this is me decorating. Um, so some of you are new which is great. Hello, welcome. I already said that. But when I started making more videos and pen paling videos here on YouTube, I would very often do story times. I have anxiety. Um, <laughs> hello. Hello, my name is Vivian and I have anxiety. I've had anxiety for quite a while. And the funny thing is, whenever I share something about that, I learn that there are thousands of you who have the same problem. So I've learned that sharing my story helps people. And I'm not saying that to give myself a pat on the back, but just to explain why I enjoy sharing my story. I am a storyteller at times, and I have learned that it can be helpful to people. So I used to do this very often. I also got a lot of negative feedback on that because not everyone enjoys chatty pen pal channels. And that is why I have decided to put, to embrace the chatty pen pal channel as my second name here on YouTube so that people who complain um, have no leg to stand on because I literally announce it in the introduction. So I'm back. I'm going to share a story with you today about anxiety, not necessarily anxiety, but about fear. Because the other day I was reading my book, just a regular book. I'm reading a thriller detective type book from Norway. Um, it's called The Therapist. And it's not necessarily about therapy, it's not about anxiety, but it's just the main character is a therapist and it's mainly about her husband being murdered. I'm not that far into the book yet, but she, I have the book here actually, and there is one page that I was reading this late at night. It almost made me cry and it kind of gave me goosebumps and I wanted to share that. Not because I think I am here for life lessons or anything important, but I've had therapy for many, many years. I've learned so many life lessons. I've shared a lot of them. I have grown a lot, yet this is a perspective that was completely new to me. And I don't know, I was kind of hoping that maybe one or two persons out there might like this um, perspective as well. For those of you that don't have anxiety or never experience fear, I'm jealous. <laughs> um, I think this might still be interesting. So I'm going to try and read this page. The problem is it is in Dutch, so I will have to read it and translate it to English as I go, but I think I, think I can manage. Okay, so here we go. Page 82. The best therapist who ever taught me at university said, the most important thing you can do for nervous clients is the following. Help them see the world as it is not how they wish it was or how they fear it would be, not how it is according to the conclusions they've drawn. Show them the world the way it really is. In other words, help them separate fantasy, wishful thinking and fear from reality. And there's a couple of examples, but basically it says, okay, blah, blah, blah. And then this is the part that really got to me. Um, sometimes we need help realizing that your fear or your anxiety doesn't say anything about your capabilities. It doesn't say anything about how you will be able to handle the situation at hand. And that got to me so much. Like I said, I've learned a lot about anxiety and stuff like that, but I never had this perspective. I've always seen as my fear, I've always seen my fear as a part of me and as, yeah, you know, originally fear is meant to warn us for difficult or dangerous situations. And so I've always seen my fear to be a truth teller, like, oh, I am super nervous, so something bad 
must be coming my way. I am speaking from the heart this time, not from the book anymore. <laughs> um, I always saw my anxiety as a teller of truth, like, oh, um, I am so nervous, which means that the situation I'm nervous for is going to be really, really bad. But this part of the book, this page of the book basically says that our fear, our anxiety doesn't say anything. It doesn't mean that we can't do what we're so afraid of. I mean, it's too difficult, two different things, two separate things. We are afraid for something, but that doesn't mean that we are afraid for it because we can't deal with it. I really hope that makes sense, but for me, something just clicked. Of course, I still have anxiety. Of course, I'm not magically cured, but I've learned in all my years of therapy and all my years of having anxiety that sometimes these kind of things can become something you carry with you, something that you remember and that you think back to every now and then, and that might help. So my anxiety for the time that is about to come, which is the time I can go back to work and the time that hopefully our lockdown and our curfew are over. Yes, I have a ton of anxiety for that, but that doesn't mean I can't deal with it. And again, for a lot of you, you may be thinking, well, duh. But I also know that I am not the only one who has this fear. And for me, I was really not, I'm still, of course not, I mean, I'm not magically cured, but it was very difficult for me to see the difference between actual fear and the fear I was feeling and reality sometimes. So I hope, I don't know, like I said, I don't think that I'm some kind of guru or something or that I'm here to give you life lessons, but it was too good not to share, if you ask me. So let me go back to what we've been doing. Um, you've seen me do a whole lot of things. I made a washi type sample with some washi types that I thought the receiver might like. Ethany, <laughs> I hope she likes them. And I added some other goodies such as labels. I have a thing for labels and uh, some clear stickers. And then I'm decorating the back of that second pocket because it is quite empty and I didn't like that. So I'm just... Uh, filling that in as we go. I added a doily and then a part of a die cut and I'm now going to actually fill the goodie. So this is some, um, what are they called? Project Life cards that I am gifting her and then I'm going to put some other things in there. The next thing I'm doing is I'm making a little envelope out of a six by six paper with my envelope punch board. I will link that down below in case you're interested. It is one of my favorite tools, as well as the score and trim and the glass cutting mat you see down here. I think I use them every video. Um, but if you don't have any of these tools and you're not interested in buying some, of course I've got you as well. I have a video tutorial on how to make envelopes any size with or without tools. So definitely check that out if you're interested. This envelope was originally meant uh, to hold my letter and I'm going to cram, the, I ended up cramming the letter in there but I also ended up putting a whole lot more goodies in there as well. You know, you've got the space, might as well make use of it. So I wanted to find a die cut to hold the flap of the envelope so instead of gluing the envelope shut I'm going to pop a die cut on the envelope and then tuck the flap of the envelope behind that. You will see me do that in a second. And then I realized, hey, there's still a lot of space in this envelope. I am also going to pop in some die cuts as a gift. And I'm just uh, sticking the envelope in on on the page, I should say. And then I'm going to find that die cut. And I immediately found it. How perfect is that? I wanted to use that for decorating earlier and I didn't. So I just ended up um, using that instead. So if you want to do this technique, what you do is you put glue on about half of the die cut. I put it on the bottom half and then I made sure there was still enough space for me to put the flap behind the heart. And that is a cute little closure. And then I thought it looked cute, but I thought it also might need something else. So I end up finding a die cut that says height there. I'm just gluing that on. And I think it looks very cute. 
So it's quite a simplistic flipbook, but I am super pleased with how this turned out. Um, I hope it gave you some ideas as well. It's been a while since I did one of these simple flipbooks, but I hope, yeah, I don't know. I, I always hope that it can give you something to work with, I guess. If you got some ideas from this, don't forget to, of course, tag me on Instagram. Uh, you can tag me at the paper letter blog or use the hashtag the paper letter blog. If you use the hashtag, your video or your project might be shown in one of my videos in the future. Super duper fun. I also want to give a special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon. All of the links are in the description box down below. And I will talk to you when I talk to you. Bye.